We check our phones 150 times a day. Why do we do this? Are we making 150 conscious choices? It's true, we're continually distracted and regularly lose time perception, often ending at late night in front of the fleshy screen. Hyperconnected, they say, overloaded by false and irrelevant information. We are, after all, less present and lucid. But what drives us? Is it simply boredom? Or better, the fear of boredom? The doing nothing seems so useless and annoying, while screens are exciting. The internet is indeed a magical place for discovery. In this video, I want to focus on how we get addicted. This is a video on the main known techniques of algorithmic manipulation. Everything we read, watch or listen online is recorded and analyzed by algorithms. These build our digital profiles and in turn personalize our digital life, filtering and prioritizing information. Some fundamental examples. On Facebook, the posts encountered by the average user every day are about 350 on at least 1500 potential posts. This means that 25% of the posts are filtered and prioritized and 75% are ultimately hidden. On YouTube, algorithms already drive more than 70% of the time spent in the platform. And 90% of the related content in the right bar is indeed personalized. On Netflix, around 80% of viewing hours come through recommendations and only around 20% from its search function. So algorithms undoubtedly steer our information consumption, but pretty much together with us, supposedly. These tools, in fact, are not that transparent and controllable. They have been purposefully designed to maximize the profit through engagement optimization. Our attention is the currency exchanged by the companies who offer us most of the online services we enjoy every day. Actually, we're pretty passive. Our choices are often illusory. Most of what we consume is predetermined in a limited pool of possibilities. But how this is happening? The following are the main known techniques of algorithmic manipulation. Variable ratio reinforcement. These are instances in which rewards are delivered unpredictably. This unpredictability affects our brain dopamine's pathway. It works like this. After a number of actions, a certain reward is achieved, like in slot machines. In a personalized newsfeed, for example, after a number of predictably uninteresting content, it's recommended to you a predictably serendipitous content, a content that surprises you. The algorithm predicted your reaction. Your response is reinforced. You start again to scroll. This is not a new dynamic at all. Already in 1948, the psychologist Skinner, father of behavioralism, studied operant conditioning by conducting experiments using animals which he placed in a Skinner box. Basically, the animal could be rewarded with food or punished with an electric shock for engaging in certain behaviors. In this way, he categorized various responses and behavior reinforcements. Human learning behavior is much the same as the way the rats and pigeons learned to press a lever. And the type of reinforcements which produces the slowest rate of extinction, namely people we go on repeating the behavior for the longest time without reinforcement, is variable ratio reinforcement. A-B testing. A-B testing is also not a new technique and it works pretty simply. To perform A-B testing, also known as split testing, you separate your audience into two random groups and show different variation to each one. You then compare the responses to each variation to determine which is the most effective based on your chosen metric. This helps to discover new patterns to maximize engagement. The most famous example of A-B testing is Facebook's infamous large-scale emotional contagion experiment. For one week, that scientists manipulated what almost 700,000 Facebook users saw in their newsfeed. Some people were shown positive content while others negative one. The result was that longer lasting moods can be transferred through networks. So basically Facebook can make you happier or sadder at will. To some this might sound obvious, but maybe it is not that obvious that algorithms can even autonomously explore these testings, and these can ultimately be detrimental to users. Such experiments are developed thanks to certain disciplines and emerging techniques like affective computing, also called emotional AI which is the development of systems and devices that can recognize, interpret, process and simulate human effects. Captology, which is the study of computers as persuasive technologies, pioneered by Professor Fogg since the 90s in Stanford University. And then the emergence of psychographic techniques and psychometrics to understand our personalities. Consider that suffice only a dozen of Facebook likes to predict your social network activities if you use substances, your values, if you are depressed or if you are impulsive, but especially your personality type. With about 100 likes, algorithms are even better at predicting your personality than one of your parents. With about 250 likes, better than your spouse. The rabbit hole effect. 
The rabbit hole effect occurs when you start watching one video and you get nudged with recommendation in the right bar towards slightly more extreme videos. Over time, you may find yourself watching something really extreme. It has been said to be one of the most powerful radicalizing instruments of the 21st century which drives people to the internet's darkest corners. This technique explodes your curiosity and follows predictable paths already followed by similar users. In other words, if thousands of people with very similar profiles to you have followed the path, you will be easily capturing the very same path. In a way, this algorithm technique works a bit like the famous boiling frog example made by Noam Chomsky. If a frog is put suddenly into boiling water, it will jump out. But if the frog is put in turbid water, which is then slowly brought to boil, it will not perceive the danger and it will be cooked to death. Is this a conspiracy theory on how people get into conspiracy theories? Nope. In a recent systematic literature review, out of 23 studies on the rabbit hole effect, 14 find evidence of this effect. 7 produced mixed results and only 2 found no evidence. This effect does not even stop in front of a global pandemic. Even if YouTube has boosted the search rankings of pro-vaccine videos to combat the influence of anti-vaccine information, when viewers are directed to anti-vaccine videos on YouTube from another website, the recommendation algorithm is still likely to expose them to additional anti-vaccine information. So despite YouTube's apparent good intentions, the rabbit hole effect still works and it ends up supporting the Novax propaganda. Dark patterns. Dark patterns are instances in which designers use their knowledge of human behavior, for example psychology, and the desire of end users to implement deceptive functionalities that are not in the user's best interest. Sure, these are not working with algorithms, but algorithms are somehow involved in assessing how effective a new functionality is, and at the same time they can help algorithms to collect more and more data. There are so many examples of dark patterns, just to give you a few examples. Nagging occurs when it is repeatedly requested something and the choice is between yes and not now rather than yes and no. Abstraction, making a process more difficult than it needs to be, for example Facebook's privacy settings. Sneaking, attempting to hide, disguise or delay the divulging of information that is relevant to the user. For example, hidden fees or terms added at the end of a long transaction. Dark patterns are even used in personalization and privacy settings, as well as in the terms and conditions that we all sign without ever reading them. Dark ads. Dark ad is a type of online advertising visible only to the adverts publisher and the intended target group. These are made to change or enforce user political preferences. Consider that the Brexit referendum cross-party vote leave campaign commissioned 1433 micro-targeted ads promoting a more or less explicit pro-Brexit message. This micro-targeting can even become ever more granular. In a recent study has been discovered that if an advertiser knows enough interest from a user, the limit is 25 specific interests, the Facebook advertising platform can be systematically exploited to deliver ads exclusively to a specific user. They refer to this practice as nano-targeting. If this doesn't concern you, consider that in 2017 UK campaign again, the leader of the Labour Party, Jeremy Corbyn, wanted to heavily invest in digital ads encouraging voters' registration. However, the chief of the Labour Party campaign thought it was a fair idea. To make Corbyn happy and at the same time spend the campaign money on other objectives, the campaign chief invested 5,000 sterlings in a Facebook campaign that exploited the custom audience tool to only reach Corbyn, his associates and a few online journalists. By doing so, Corbyn was convinced the campaign was implemented following his instructions. Search engine manipulation effects, or simply SIEM, is the change in customer preferences from manipulation of search results by search engine providers. This could occur especially during election, search engine could prioritize preferred candidates. One of the actual risks is that more or less a certain percentage of persuadable people, people known to be particularly vulnerable to targeted messages, the one discussed in the documentary The Social Dilemma, can really shift elections. A 2015 study indicated that such manipulation could shift the voting preferences of undecided voters by 20% or more, and up to 80% in some demographics. Other studies confirm the effect. Of course, Google denies secretly ranking search results to manipulate user sentiment. The risk remains, also, this kind of effect not only works on search engines, but also on YouTube's curated results as well as Facebook's newsfeed. So, to recap and make it simple, with variable racial enforcements, algorithms try to excite you and create addiction. With A-B testing, they discover your vulnerabilities to exploit in order to maximize your engagement. With the rabbit hole effect, they can expose you to ever more extreme ideas and eventually radicalize you. With dark patterns, they create persuasive design that sear your behaviors and choices. With dark ads, they send you highly targeted messages. And finally, with the search engine manipulation effect, they can shift elections. And a fundamental question remains, are we only persuaded or are
actually manipulated. But where do we draw the line between manipulation and persuasion, between control and responsibility? We like to believe to be free, so we tend to guess it's persuasion and we can opt out. But for them, the big tech, it is pretty clear. They know they govern our attention, steer our behaviors and ultimately control our thoughts. They know they are manipulating our lives. These techniques of algorithm and manipulation, which are actually the very few we are really aware of, more than answers provides us with more questions. What well, makes you think to be immune to their influence? Should your attention be something that money can buy from the ad industry through algorithms? And what, after all, is the role of personalization algorithms in your life? The question, however, isn't much what you think of algorithms, but an even more meaningful question is, what do algorithms really think of you? The real problem, in fact, is not much that algorithms are imperscrutable black boxes, but that we, our minds, are black boxes for platforms. And while the capitalism of surveillance wants everyone and everything predictable, we remain to some extent unpredictable, and we want and need the unpredictability. And this is basically what we call privacy.